Okay, good morning, good afternoon, depending on where you are. So in the in in the next uh, 40, 50 minutes, we are going to to show share with you uh, the the outcome of our Adam Scarcity Manager Integration Project uh, that will uh, that will uh, be consolidated into a uh, into uh, a product in the uh, in the next uh, in the next weeks. Uh, <clears throat> so this is uh, um, our agenda for for uh, this webinar. So we will introduce uh, uh, the main reasons why uh, MSC decided to, to develop a, such an integration, and then the product that we are presenting today, um, and the objectives of uh, of, uh, of this uh, of this implementation. And then we will go through some uh, some demos to show some. Uh, uh, real example, even if simple, but just to fit the, the ideas and the concept. And then we will have a, a, a separate uh, section about process automation, some conclusion, and the QA session at the end. So, first of all, uh, let's see a few, uh, let's say a few words about uh, facts around Adam's car. Uh, which is the <laughs> the engineering tool that that uh, we are talking about today? So <clears throat> there are some uh, some facts that uh, we need to to share uh, since the beginning. So we we know that uh, our Adam's car works, and we know that uh, the architecture of Adam's car is based on some database that uh, you call CDBs, uh, and these uh, these CDBs are essentially uh, directory structures with many many cross connected files uh, and uh, and CDBs evolve during the development of, uh, of cars uh, are modified are extended and so on and we we know all, all that each simulation result is affected by any assembly component change so uh, the, this is is uh, this depends on how Adam's car is um, and we have. So uh, the issues that uh, our customers, probably you, are facing uh, are are related to uh, um, aspects like not being able to uh, the robust revision control through uh, um, just through uh, file system uh, tools. Uh, no, no way to uh, have a full traceability of your simulations uh, back to the versions of the component used uh, to build the assembly, the Adam's car assembly being uh, being tested. Uh, in in some or, uh, or, um, organizations, it's important to have a, let's say a kind of a formal release uh, uh, control process available to know who. Uh, modified and when uh, uh, some element in the public CDBs have been modified and why. Um, we know that in, in some situations, some companies, some uh, in-house solutions have been put in place, um, basically using source control systems like CVS or SVN. And, uh, and we are aware that uh, uh, those solutions are just partial solutions. Um, other important aspects uh, are uh, related to data management uh, of, uh, of simulation data. Uh, many customers have uh, uh, in-house process automation scripts or mechanisms that are producing a lot of uh, simulations, a lot of results, but the a formal, uh, a robust, and consistent data management is is missing. So last but not least, uh, historically, most of the uh, Adams Adams car jobs are executed on, uh, on local workstations, and the, the usage of uh, the HPC, so the uh, cluster computing environment, is is quite quite limited and could be could be improved. So what M so MSC is is aware of those aspects and uh, what uh, and the project around uh, 
the integration between scene manager is, and, and Adam's car uh, is intended to uh, address most of, uh, if not all, the, the issues that uh, we, we shared before. And, uh, and so uh, the project, uh, the, the outcome of the project is, uh, is the, the scene manager Adam's car portal. And uh, the scene manager Adam's car portal uh, gives a, a certain number of answers to, to, the, to the issue that we listed. So first of all, uh, regarding data sharing. So the scene manager portal designed for Adam's car uh, is a, a system, is a central system that uh, can be used to, to share um, Adam's car uh, data. So Adam's car CDB files, result files, uh, input decks or ADM files, uh, uh, with the with the, the Adam's car user community and uh, mm, uh, a lot of uh, uh, tuning and uh, uh, asset control logics can be can be put in place and configured to to provide access only to uh, the the specific uh, users that should uh, should access the information then um, uh, revision control is another uh, important aspect uh, as, as anticipated, uh, CDB files are are modified during during the development of, of a car, mm -hmm. and uh, and it's important to to keep track of the different revisions that have been used, and to keep track of the uh, which revision of a component was used in the simulation, and so on. And so this is this is a capability that uh, the C Manager Adams Car Portal is is providing. Uh, you know that most of the Adam's car files contain links to other other files that might belong to different uh, car databases, and uh, so also this information, so these uh, references are easily made available uh, to to the other users. And we will see later that these references are are used in uh, uh, and are made available in not just in the direct uh, um, in the direct way, but also in the reverse way. We will see it later. Um, another important uh, topic is related to metadata. The files in the Adam's car database contain a lot of useful and key attributes uh, that the user would like to easily access. And uh, the C Manager Adam's car portal can uh, extract those key informations and uh, uh, associate them to um, the corresponding entity uh, that represent the, uh, the files in the manager, the Adam's car files in the manager. So probably in between the lines, you understood that the C manager system is, is based on a, on a say, formal uh, data representation uh, on top of, of a database system. So being a database, all data can be easily searched for and found. Um, another important aspect you, you might be interested in is that uh, in Sim Manager you can uh, plug uh, some quality assurance logic that uh, can check and flag if uh, the, uh, the data, so assemblies, uh, bushings, uh, subsystem models, ideas, with the, the company guidelines. And you can immediately uh, filter which are, uh, which are good or bad, depending on your, your business. So this, is, this was just a, a quick summary. Uh, and then uh, let me go through some, uh, some, some demos uh, to, to give you real examples. So first demo, is uh, is about uh, is about navigating into a pre-populated system. So we took a, a simple example, you know, from the engineering point of view. We we are focusing the the, the attention on a simple study. So we want to understand how uh, the position of a certain hard point called tire rod outer uh, affects the toe and camber angles. So in this in this example in this demo we are considering three positions 
three z coordinates of this hard point. And so for each uh, coordinate, there's a specific assembly version uh, and so specific sub subsystem versions because the hard point is uh, contained into a, into a subsystem. And for each, uh, for each assembly revision, we will have a, a parallel with travel simulation. And then at the end, we will compare to NCAM. To go deeper in the, in the, in the, in the demo, uh, you will see that in our, in our system, we have four cross-referenced public CDBs. So the, the, the ACAR shared, so the, the standard Adams car shared database, the TRX uh, CDB, where our uh, assembly uh, to be studied is, uh, is located, and then two other uh, default Adams car uh, in, uh, CDB. So I mentioned before that we will study three revisions of uh, the TR front vehicle assembly, which is located in TRX. <clears throat> uh, so I, I will stress quite a, quite a bit this uh, concept of a revisioning because this is one of the key uh, the key functionalities of, uh, of the Steam Manager Adams car portal. So uh, during this study we will uh, explore three different uh, positions of the art point and so we will generate revisions of the subsystems to, to go in detail so we will take the first revision is the default the default uh, uh, configuration of the tr front vehicle and uh, with this coordinate of the subsystem coming from the adams car share database then the second revision of the same assembly will reference this, the, the same subsystem, but located in the TRX CDB, where we modified the coordinate, the Z coordinates, and we're setting it to 335. The third revision of the assembly will uh, reference a second revision of uh, the suspension subsystem located in TRX with 337 as Z coordinates. The second subsystem does not change among the, the three revisions of the assembly. It is, it is still the TR front steering subsystem, revision one from the Adams car share. We will execute, we will run the same parallel wheel travel simulation for each, so with same parameters, and we will extract and compare tone and camber angles. We will build a comparison report inside Sim Manager, and we will see how Sim Manager is able to trace. All, all the data in a consistent way. Few words about how the system was populated. We will come back on this later. <clears throat> we we have a, a, we imported in Sim Manager a set of public CDBs, so ACAR shared, AMEX shared, A driveline shared, and the TRX where our system, our assembly is located. Then the user, the user. Uh, started an Adams car session on his local uh, PC. And thanks to a, a, a SIM manager plugin developed for, uh, for Adams car, which is part of uh, the SIM manager Adams car portal package, uh, the user retrieved, retrieved uh, the TRX CDB in his uh, local environment, executed the simulation, and then Again, using the Adams car, the SIM manager plugin for Adams car, he published back a local copy of uh, the TRX CDB and the associated simulation files. Then for the second run, he modified the, the hard point position, saving uh, and modifying uh, uh, local assembly and subsystem file, running the second simulation, and then publishing the modified CDB and the simulation files into into Sim Manager. Same for the third for the third iteration. So all these publications here um, produced a local area inside the Sim Manager system. Okay, so let's go to the to the demo now. Okay, so this is so every every user. Uh, to access Sim Manager uh, has to type a certain URL, opening a, a web page, and then uh, the user needs to be to authenticate it himself. So 
So in this case, user one is accessing scene manager. He, the, the page that he sees is his own home page. Every user can use a default home page or create a, a, a custom, so, uh, sorry, a, a specific home page with the most relevant uh, widget containing the information that he needs for his daily work. Um, okay, C Manager has, has several uh, workspaces. In this workspace, we can see the public files. So this view shows uh, the, the CDB files, the CDB uh, directory structures for the four uh, CDBs that have been previously uh, imported into C Manager. So here you can you can navigate uh, the directory structure almost like as you were in your file system. You will notice that Every, uh, okay, the assembly file, for example, uh, and in general, each CDB file is represented in C Manager with an object of a corresponding type. In this case, the ASY, the assembly file, is represented by an assembly object you see here on top with a certain set of meta attributes. You see here, for example, suspension is the assembly class of uh, extracted uh, from the assembly file. And any relevant information can be extracted from the Adams Kerr files and associated as meta metadata to the corresponding object in CMS. Of course, you can access the file itself. It's stored inside C Manager. So let's go back to the to the tree. So here we can give a look at the list of subsystems. This is the string used. Okay. Um, here we can see that uh, looking at the details of this subsystem, uh, okay, here is the name, the major role, minor role, and so on. And one of the attributes of, uh, of this subsystem is, uh, uh, is represented by the list of all assemblies that are using this subsystem. So this is, this is the, the kind of reverse relation that I was uh, mentioning before. This is an information that uh, uh, is typically very hard to, to extract just by looking at uh, the, the CDB files themselves. So you know that if you modify this subsystem, all these assemblies will be intact. And then this is the template and these are the property files which are referenced by this specific revision of the sub subsystem. So it's revision one. Again, major and minor role uh, are extracted from the subsystem, and this is the CDB containing this, uh, this subsystem file. Again, you see here on top, this, this subsystem object has been created to hold the subsystem file. And uh, in the TRX, uh, we basically have just the, the um, one assembly, the assembly that we are going to study. Public assemblies is a different view uh, on, on the public data. So it's an hierarchical view of CDBs starting from the assembly files. And then you can recursively expand the node and see what the, uh, the subsystems are, what the template referenced by each subsystem is, and so on. So you see here, so from the assembly to the subsystem, from the subsystem to the template and the properties. And in this case, our assembly is, is this one. The assembly is from the TRX CDB, and the subsystems are both, both subsystems are from the shared CDB. So in this case, what the TRX CDB is referencing uh, element, subsystems, and property files from the Adams car sheet. Okay, there's a, there's a, a number of ways that you can uh, use to understand exactly what are the components of your assemblies and subsystems. Uh, 
One example is this. In this case, you select the assembly object, then you go to the component tab view, and then you have this hierarchical uh, table uh, where you can see the details of each, uh, each component. Another way is through the pedigree viewer. You select the assembly, then pedigree viewer uh, button, and then from the assembly on the left, you can see what are the subsystems in a tabular view, and the property files, and the, and the template. Again, in this table, you, you have all, all the attributes, of the information. OK. Then let's go to the local assemblies view. The local assemblies view shows the, again, in a in hierarchical view, uh, the content of what the users uh, published into Sim Manager from his local uh, um, disk. So in this case, uh, we, we see that uh, there are three revisions of, uh, of uh, the, the local CDB, one revision for each, for each uh, configuration of the assembly, Let's see front equal R1, R2, R3. So, so this contains all the revisions of user's local CDB. And this is the latest revision of the assembly. So by default, this was configured this way to show the latest revision of the assembly, the R3, which is made of revision two of the front suspension and still revision one of the steering. So revision two of the front suspension belongs to TRX, while the very first revision was coming from the Adams car shared for this. The steering is always from the Adams car shared for all the three simulations. So now let, let's give a look at, uh, at, at the different uh, uh, revisions. Um, so this is, uh, this is just to clarify. So we have three revisions of the assembly, of the TR font vehicle assembly. For each revision, the steering is always coming from the Adams car shared uh, CDB. For the revision number three, the last one, the suspension uh, subsystem is uh, the revision two coming from the TRX. For the second revision of the assembly, the, the uh, suspension subsystem is revision one from the TRX, and for the very first assembly, both the suspension subsystem and the steering are coming from the Adams car shield, and they are at revision one. One second. I stopped the, the movie too early. Okay. So just to recap what we saw, assembly three, assembly revision two, front suspension coming from TRX. Okay. Okay, now we, we are going to uh, see what uh, the other files, uh, what are the other files that have been imported by, by the user in, in, the all, in all those publications. So just to, to be clear, we are here we are just navigating through the data that have been imported in Sim Manager by the, uh, the user after exporting the TRX in his local disk and, and performing changes, modifying hardpoint uh, locations, and Publishing modified CDBs and simulation results into into his local area inside Sim Manager. Uh, so this view, so the local files, contain a view of the files published in Sim Manager from the user. So contain simulation runs, post processing data, everything uh, categorized and associated to the corresponding assembly file. So 
For example, uh, this is the, the last uh, simulation that was, uh, that was published. So study one sim folder contains the three simulation, either one, two, three. The ACF object contains the ACF and the ADM. The, the dot res object contains the result, the dot res file and the other output. And then below the result file, uh, we have uh, all the post-processing objects uh, like uh, movies, key results, uh, and uh, everything like that. In this case, we have just uh, key result curves that, by the way, have been uh, created uh, based on a plot configuration file, a standard plot configuration file, and then converted into the sim manager form. This notation here means that uh, this result, item three parallel travel dot res, is associated to the revision tree of the our front vehicle asset. So th this one. So then let's expand all the uh, the, the simulations just to give you, to show you that every single. Uh, simulation is uh, precisely linked to the corresponding version of, uh, of, uh, of the asset. So in this case, we, we select the result of the third simulation. We select pedigree view. We see that on the left side of the result, we have the, the ADM file, the corresponding ADM file, and the ADM file is connected to the revision number three of our, of our asset. We can do the same on the second run, input deck, and then corresponding assembly is the second revision of, of our asset. And then, of course, same for the first one, but we skip it. Then we put the focus on the ADM file, and we go to the pedigree viewer, and then we can go to the right side, and we see that as a children of, of the result, we have a, a set of curves that have been generated by the plugin, starting from the third result. And as I said, they have been created based on plot configuration file. And then you can easily go through the, the different curves. At the right side of, of this list of curves, we have, a, we have a comparison report in two revisions, the old revision and the active revision. Uh, if we select the active revision, we see that it's a comparison report. It's called parallel travel report. It contains three sections, a legend, a two angle, and the camber angle section. And we see that uh, the contribution for this uh, for this uh, report comes from the three different simulations. And here we compare the curves and the report uh, is available also in uh, different formats. So PDF document, uh, Word document, HTML, and PowerPoint. If we select the pedigree view, viewer button from here, we can easily see that this comparison re report is referencing the, the ADM for corresponding to three different revisions of, of the assembly. We can, we can compare them. We, we see we can compare the metadata and the date when they've been created. And here, more, more interesting, we can see, we can see that uh, in this uh, comparison, this compare workspace, we see that so each column is a revision of our assembly our TR font vehicle assembly. We see that the TR steering su subsystem from Adam's car shared was always used in the three revisions of the, of the assembly. The, the Adam's car shared version was used in the, in the first one. And then the, the one from TRX was used in the second and the third, but they, are, but they differ because there are two revision of the front suspension subsystem being used. One with one Z coordinate, one with another Z coordinate. Okay.
second. So I, I, if I go back to the uh, to the home page, I can see my parallel travel report. I can access directly from here. I can I and I can see <clears throat> the the full traceability of my study. So from the comparison report back to the to the EDM files and back to the to the assembly version. F, and if you uh, select each single subsystem, you can know exactly which version of which revision of uh, each component uh, being used to obtain such a result. So with this with this C uh, manager Adam Scal 2014 product, um, uh, we we show that we can make the explicit data relation. Um, we can interpret and make data relation explicit. We can extract metadata from CDB file. We can clearly uh, support a consistent file revision management and provide full traceability from the result file to, to the specific bushing revision used to obtain certain, certain results. So this, this first demo, uh, this is the first demo, and then let me uh, skip uh, go to the, to the second one. So as part of the package, I mentioned we developed the SC Manager Atom Scarf plugin, with, which contains basic uh, commands to access, uh, to connect to C Manager, retrieve uh, CDB data from C Manager into local folder, and publish data data back into into C Manager. Uh, let me show you very quickly uh, a movie. Uh, with the with the Adams card plugin, uh, I, I will skip uh, some part. So in this session, we have just two uh, two databases: the shared and the private. Uh, we log in to C Manager from here. Then we can uh, we can extract, so we can retrieve uh, two uh, CDBs from C Manager. In this case, the shared and the XO1. We can extract them into a local folder and add the, the just extracted local CDBs to our Adams Car session. Okay, then then you see that the just exported CDBs. Have been connected to the to the uh, Adams Car session. Now we can open the the assembly from X01 CDB. Okay. And then I would like to accelerate a little bit. So uh, uh, from this uh, plugin, we can uh, import into uh, the User local uh, area in C Manager, the just exported, uh, the two just export the CDBs and the simulations that we are going to do later. Okay, so let me let me move a little bit faster. So we here we we change we change an R point of one subsystem. Okay, and then. We publish, we, we, we publish an assembly locally, and then we publish uh, a modified assembly into C Manager. Okay. Then we uh, we create a, a folder inside the the, the local um, disk, just beside the export directory that we created before. So we create a study folder. We move there and we, let me go fast, we execute one parallel travel. Uh, so this will, will, uh, will write out uh, files, output files in the folder we just created. Okay. And then we will run another opposite travel simulation, but in this case, we will just export the ADM and ACF file and no Simulation is started. So, okay. Okay. You see, so files only will just generate 
the ADM and ACF. Okay, then we, we then thanks to the uh, plugin, we publish everything into into Sim Manager, and uh, and then this part is is uh, is finished. Then I will end, uh, hand over to my colleague Brian that will will guide you through the second part of the of the presentation. Thank you. So the movie I want to show picks up where Johnny left off. And uh, we published two simulations uh, into Sim Manager, and the user can log in to Sim Manager again. And the first thing we want to do is just take a look at the ACF file that we published, which has no results. So again, you can see the published has uh, a lot of the metadata extracted. So when we see the the Adams car, uh, the Adams control file, you can see the date which it was made and uh, some of the metadata associated with the simulation. So you, we've remembered that 500 steps and and everything that we typed in earlier. We're going to go to the pedigree viewer, and here you'll notice. Uh, we don't have the results yet. Uh, the, the first one we did, but the second one we did the files only. So no results are available. And here what we're trying to do is a bit of a preview for what we'd like to do in future versions of, of the Adams Car portal. Our first phase uh, really focused on the data management. So just the, uh, the ability to integrate with Adams Car and maintain and manage your data for you. The phase two, which is what we want to do and what we're planning to do in 2015, is process automation. So this is about creating new data and uh, automating a lot of the work that you may do interactively. So the first uh, kind of stepping stone for us was to see if we could integrate the solver into Sim Manager. So instead of interactively creating the results and then publishing, what we'd like to do is from Sim Manager select this Adams control file and create the results from Sim Manager. So what we're able to do is leverage some of the experience we have in the FEA space and launch a, a, a functionality we call simulate. And this will integrate to the uh, Adams car solver. Uh, we haven't yet uh, implemented integration for post processing, but we are very close. And you would be able to automatically generate those key results that you saw earlier by Johnny, the curves um, and maybe uh, key values and so forth, and then even report generator. So this is experience that we've had in, in FEA for quite some time. And we really want to get to really the same place with Adam's car where you can uh, pick something, uh, simulate it, and then uh, at the end you have a, a ready to go report with everything you want to know. Uh, but here we'll hit submit, we'll just run the solver. and uh, here you have a chance to integrate to uh, your HPC environment, your high com performance computing environment, and, uh, and, and use some of that horsepower over there. It may be overkill for a simple simulation like this, uh, but what we really have in mind are, imagine that uh, given a particular assembly, suppose you'd like to fingerprint maybe you know, 20 or 30 different load cases. Um, and then maybe not just that assembly, but maybe some variations of assembly, like a best case and a worst case, or uh, loaded or unloaded. So you'd be able to do all these variations that could easily add up to maybe hundreds of simulations, and uh, some manager would be able to coordinate all that work for you uh, and do that automation. And then maybe at that point, HPC becomes a very handy, handy resource for you, and you can get your jobs done back quickly. But the manager manages the data for you. It launches it remotely for you. It cleans up all the data, brings it back over to the manager. And here I just made it a really simple example, but we went back to the input deck and it went to the pedigree viewer again. And now we can see the results do exist. This came from the automation. And uh, uh, we have access to uh, the, all the, uh, the result uh, files that you'd expect. This is kind of just an initial implementation. Uh, we've got quite a lot of plans to, to continue building this out. Um, so again, this is future stuff. This is 2015, uh, but this is just a preview of, of what, we, what we actually are even able to do in 2014. 
so what you saw was the ability to, to launch a, a simple simulation uh, from the web. This uh, leverages your high performance computing environment. Uh, the file movement is, is handled all for you behind the scenes. Uh, so all the exporting of files to your HPC and then importing the, the results. Uh, as the job is running, it could take a significant amount of time if it's a long job. So you would be able to monitor how it's running, um, how long it's been running, um, where it is in the process. Uh, you're able to import the results. So traceability you saw with our pedigree viewer. And then some basic cleanup, you can expect that the, all the files when you're done are cleaned up from your HPC and, and it's, uh, everything has been brought back into Sim Manager. <clears throat> now, move, really moving forward uh, is really where we are thinking and building on this, uh, this preview that we've put in place. And uh, one of the tools that we have in Sim Manager, oh, sorry, I need to put this in present. Uh, one of the tools that we have in, uh, in Sim Manager is what we call the simulation generator, and this provides a, a matrix view. This has been really successful for us in FEA, and we think there's a really great chance in uh, Adam's car to also use it. What you'd be able to do is pick and choose uh, which components you'd like, uh, which subsystems should be related to an assembly. And, uh, that would be the rows. And then on the columns would be all the standard load cases you would like to run. So this is maybe a common uh, use case for a lot of engineers where they have a design and they'd really just like to get all of the, their standard runs done. So here you would be able to add and remove as many of these load cases as you'd like. And then you could say, um, submit all. And that would submit all these jobs. They would all run in parallel. And when you're done, you would be able to quickly get uh, a single report, which summarizes the results of everything. So you'd be able to really quickly get your results uh, back. <clears throat> um, so the automation involves uh, not just solving, but also the post-processing and report generation. Uh, this is a really great uh, approach, I think, for doing standard simulations. Uh, another kind of variation on this is the variation studies. I think it's even really common in this Adams card world to do DOEs um, and even robustness studies. So that's very much built into simulation generator. It's not always about just running one design, but you want to run maybe many small variations of that design and, and coordinating that. Uh, so some manager will really help you. I think a lot of times in DOEs, you can get uh, overloaded by files. And uh, the manager will help keep the, keep those things organized for you. <clears throat> so here, uh, maybe we can wrap things up. I know we're running short. So uh, in conclusion, we really have two uh, two versions we're really talking about. 2014 is what we have today. Uh, it'll be released in GA, uh, I think, days now. Uh, we're almost ready to, to get it out the door. And uh, this is focused on on data management, consistent data management. And that means the ability to manage your revision and uh, release control. That's, that's maybe another word for how to best share your data with other users. Uh, full traceability, which is really nice. If you have a report, you know exactly what it made, uh, what was made to make that report. There's no confusion. You know exactly which bushing, for example, was used. And then comparison, uh, almost always, when you have results, you want to compare it to something else, maybe a baseline. Uh, that's built into Sim Manager. So being able to, to make a report relating it to another report is, is, is central. And then moving forward, uh, which is really the process automation. Uh, so we want to, uh, out of the box, support some standard simulation procedures, uh, kind of like what you saw earlier. Uh, here you have a chance to integrate to your high-performance computing environment, which will assist uh, your solve and post, running things in parallel, which will mean increased throughput. And uh, it really starts to open the door. So manager has a long experience with FEA, FEM. And here what we can do is start uh, process automation 
for integration between your multi-body um, and your FEA world. So doing road load um, and multi-body and how that can feed into FEA. And then with even flexible body, uh, that can feed into multi-body. Uh, so you can go both ways. And since manage, the manager can hold on to both your data for you, you would be able to do process automation and help uh, help make that experience a bit easier. Um, yeah, so with that, I think uh, we're ready for Q&A.